You may know me as the footballer who played with Cork on a very successful team and we managed to win 10 All-Irelands. Uh, you may know me as just that curly-haired corner forward if you didn't know my name. You may know me as uh, being involved with the Women's Gaelic Players Association and a founding member. You may know me from speaking out around the time of the marriage equality referendum in 2015. You may know me as a teacher. You may not have heard of me at all. And that's fine too. You're about to hear a little bit about me and my journey. So I've seen many changes in my lifetime, but none more so than the changes in me. I've mixed emotions when I think back to when I was younger. You know, I'd, I've no, I'd no strong sense of identity or pride. Even though I was excelling in any of my sport, many of my sporting endeavors or anything, I used to play f football, camogie, everything. But success on the field and not feeling proud, bit of a paradox, don't you think? Being a real tomboy, I played sport and football with the lads at every opportunity at every lunch break. They treated me as their equal. Um, but I had to wait until sixth class to represent my school and to be, I was captain and I represent the school in our first girls football team that represented the school in Parque Cueve. It was a long wait for that team to be formed. We won and I felt proud and that's me there on that day looking tiny <laughs> as it was for many years. A little bit later in my teens, oops, I realised I was different. I was very comfortable on the pitch but not really comfortable with who I was. And I was trying to figure out the missing link. What was it that set me apart from the other girls? Remember, growing up, as a young girl, it was illegal to be gay. As a teenager and adolescent, it wasn't really spoken about. And when it was, it wasn't in a positive capacity. And I had a few gay, ro gay role models that I could look up to, or that were out there, and those that were out were often treated with disdain. Now, I was aware of these two fabulous sports people, Billie Jean King and Martina Navratilova, but I couldn't really relate to them. I didn't play the same sport as them. I wasn't from the same country as them. I wasn't from the same era, and I certainly didn't want their hairstyle. Closer to home, our first female president, Mary McAleese, or sorry, Mary Robinson, was uh, instrumental in spearheading the decriminalization of homosexuality in 1993. Now, I was aware of her as our president, even though you might not think it from what I just said, and I was aware of her hairstyle, but not the fine work she was doing on my behalf until later in my journey. And what a role model she is, what a woman. So sports was a comfortable place for me to be in because I felt free, I was able to express myself, I was comfortable on the pitch, you know, it was where I felt most confident. But privately, I really didn't have that same confidence in who I was, and I was a bit anxious. Ireland's laws weren't exactly giving me much solace to think any differently, and I was deeply concerned and, and a bit preoccupied by, by the factor of what I thought was going to be, you know, by coming out and being true to myself, that I was actually going to disappoint everyone that I knew and that knew me. And, you know, I, I was probably compensating and trying to play and play even better so that I, you know, if I was going to come out, that I, that I wouldn't disappoint everyone especially my parents and my family. Um, despite that, in 2005, we won an All-Ireland. I was player of the match, player of the year. I had two All-Stars to my name at that stage. But privately, I was beginning to untangle my identity and, and really explore my sexuality. And with that came rumours and paranoia. And in 2006, in what was, in what was the, the biggest day of the year for me, the All-Ireland final, I was, I was a mess. I, I really didn't kind of want to be there in Co Park. I was concerned that, um, that the rumours that I thought, you know, of me being gay were going to be in the stands and in the crowd and that my parents would hear this. And I didn't want my name being associated with being gay as opposed to Valerie the footballer because I wasn't ready for it. It was because I hadn't accepted it myself. So here I was letting letting the things that I couldn't control outside the football pitch, you know, affect me and jeopardize my ability to play to my potential and, and 
you know, I was gonna, it was going to jeopardise my ambitions as a sports person. And so I was losing control off the pitch and on the pitch. I didn't want the control. So needless to say, on that day, I got taken off. I didn't even score. And it kind of reminds me of the Panty Bliss, our Irish activist, who in her noble, call, noble call speech describes it as checking herself. So I was, felt like I was constantly checking myself and I couldn't feel free. I didn't feel free. And then a turning point happened. For a long time, I didn't want to be gay, but I was. And I knew that I had to accept it. And I am. And that gave me the strength to finally be true to myself and to come out to my parents and to my family and to my friends and live my life. I was very relieved and encouraged by the support that I got from my parents and my family and friends. And looking back, I, I remember one thing my dad did ask. He said, is it because you play sport and is it because you play football? Now, I know that his innocence was out of lack of conversation around the topic, especially at that time. Um, thankfully, there was no mention of conversion therapy or calling the priest to exercise my gay soul. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But I have spoken to people who have been kicked out of their homes and who have been disowned for simply being who they are. It's shocking, really. So the support of my family meant the world to me, but there was still more to do. So now, for my public coming out, and then my second, public, second coming out, as I like to, talk, like to call it, um, it happened in, in front of the cameras. Um, I was part of a, the Donald Cusack's documentary coming out of the curve, um, where I spoke a bit about my life and my sexuality. And, you know, it wasn't th that comfortable for me speaking. Um, I had the support, obviously, so, I, you know, it was fine. But I, I was still a bit vulnerable because I was putting myself in front of the cameras um, in the limelight for something other than football. And, you know, I didn't particularly want to be talking about something so private to me. But I knew that it I wanted to do it, and I knew that by doing it, it could make a difference. So by talking publicly, action had turned to advocacy, as you can see here, and I think this woman says it better. When I was younger, all I wanted to do was play, and that was all I was focused on. But as I grew older, I realized the voice that I had and how people looked up to me and up to my teammates, that you could make a positive contribution by just showing that you can be yourself. You have the opportunity to help others and, and to make an impact and I think it's important to use that and be socially conscious. It's lovely to be able to kind of use my voice to help people. When the lights go off and the fans go home, life goes on. So I accepted the invitation to speak at various public events to try and start that conversation around the referendum. And one of the results of that day was this day, an All-Ireland all League final that was televised in 2015, the January of 2015, or sorry, so the documentary was in January, but this was um, just shortly before the, the vote on the marriage equality referendum. That was a lovely, lovely day for me because, you know, that visible display of my teammates wearing rainbow laces with me, you know, was, was comforting. And that by them doing it as well, it was, it was significant and very empowering. And I knew that the conversation, you know, had started and was continuing within the wider, wider community of the Gaelic Games family. The day we won the referendum, what a day, the 22nd of May 2015. I'd say it was like what, what our, it felt like Ireland winning a World Cup, or what I imagine it might feel like. Um, that little girl in me didn't need to feel she had to hide her differences anymore. Um, I just felt, I felt free. I felt like I, you know, I had the same rights as my straight brothers and sisters. So, with all of this, um, you know, I've, I've, I hadn't been as caught up and worried about me and my identity or my sexuality. And sometimes I actually forget that I'm gay. I'm just, you know, living my life, which is great. So, as more of us, though, you know, live our lives openly and honestly, we as a society can expect a more inclusive society, which is crucial for anyone who's growing up 
and challenged with, with their identity and their differences. I'm really proud to be part of the Gaelic Games organisation and here um, I'm very uh, glad that recently at Congress, the, the president of the GA, which is the largest organisation in Ireland, sporting organisations in Ireland, that they acknowledge that the protection and respect for members of the LGBTQ community involved in Gaelic Games should be a priority for the association. Now, that is encouraging and timely. And recently they have appointed, uh, they're going to appoint, uh, they've announced that they're going to appoint a uh, diversity manager. So that is, that is really encouraging and it show, it's a sign of progress. How amazing would it be if they could go a step further and, you know, be involved in something like Pride Parade? I'd love to see something like that. That would really be a monumental support and a monumental declaration of support. People often ask, well, what's the point in gay pride now that you have all the rights? Well, it's important. It's important because young people growing up need to see that those that are different can be proud in that difference. It's important to celebrate how far we have come and a reminder of what we have overcome. When you grow up in a world where being who you are is illegal, it's important to mark your freedom and show that you can be a vessel for change. So, a personal story and something that kind of keeps me going when I don't particularly want to speak uh, about my sexuality is um, a woman to be, a young mother to be actually contacted me through Instagram and wanted to share her story with me and spoke of her, her challenges that she was overcoming but said that I managed to inspire her and kind of keep her going in her journey and uh, that she's actually going to name her child Valerie after me. She does know that it's a, it's a baby girl, that it's going to be a baby girl, but uh, well, that would work too, I know, if it was, if it was a guy. Um, so keep in mind that I'm a teacher and um, I can see the changes that are happening in school. I, I've been part of an inclusivity week in school where I've seen my students speak honestly and openly and be true to themselves, and that's really inspiring because it shows change. And to me, that is worth 100 all-stars. But there's still more work to do. I'm encouraged by how far we have come as a society, um, most especially the changes in my short, short lifetime. Um, I, I think back to the tragedy of what it was, you know, to be gay prior to 1993, and now we have, happen, we have a teacher who happens to be gay. You know, that really shows our ability to change our perceptions and our views. I'm extremely grateful for those who campaigned and fought the fight for change. Those who, cha who shared stories, maybe very personal stories, stories they may not, may not have been comfortable telling, but told anyway, knowing that it would make a difference, or at least hoping that it would. Our little nation, in a short time frame, has become a beacon of hope and a mirror of possibility for anyone in, other con in an other country who has not afforded the same freedoms and rights that we enjoy here, even right now. The freedom to love who you love, the freedom of speech, the freedom to drive, the freedom to play the sport you want to play, the freedom to play in Parque Cueve, especially if you're Ed Sheeran, he got to play there more than I did. But what seems impossible now is a possibility in the future. How times have changed and how we have changed times but don't wait for change, be part of it. Thank you.